Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Opus Mega 2. This is a 2500 watt portal power station. This thing right here is perfect for those of you looking for a portal power station that you can use in your home, for home backup, and in your RV. This thing has a 30 amp plug that plugs right into your RV, so it makes it perfect for that. With the capacity of 2048 watt hour and the option of using the extra battery, this thing is perfect for that. All right, so let's get it unboxed and see exactly what it comes with. And I'll go over all the other specs with you guys. So let's get that open. All right, guys, so there it is, the Opus Mega 2 Portal Power Station. This is what it looks like in the box it comes in. There's some quick specs right here. See the capacity? I told you guys, 2,048 watt hour. And it's an input with the solar you can go all the way up to 2,100 watts of solar. AC charging, 1,600 watts. Okay, let's get this thing open. Like I said, it weighs 53 pounds. Dimensions right here. The battery, lithium ion phosphate. So it does have a BMS in there. Real nice portable power station. We are gonna be load testing this thing. I'll use the RV to show you that it can run some of the heavy loads on the RV due to that 30 amp plug. So let's get it out of the box and see what it comes with. Okay, first thing you see right here are some of the plugs. All right guys, while we have all the cords out, this is your car charger cord. Use this to charge it in your car, 12 volt output, Anderson plug. This one's the one we're gonna use probably the most, the solar charger. You can get up to 2100 watts. So that's from 12 volts to 150 volts. It has a really high voltage that makes it real good. So you can get those high wattage through those wires. You got some more Anderson plugs over here and your AC charger. This uses it to charge up your uh, Mega 2 1600 watts with AC charging. All right, there it is. Let's go over some of this, the plugs right here. So let's turn it on. Just hold it down for a few seconds and we'll pop right up. It's gonna show you 100%. I went ahead and charged it to 100% so we can do the testing. Nice big display. You have your wireless and your Bluetooth right here. You turn that and you can see the icon comes up. Over here, we have a 12 volt output. You can output 12 volts, 10 amps from right here. You have your two DC 5521 ports right here. And this right here is the one I love the most. This is your RV plug. So if you guys are looking for a portable power station you can use on your RV, you do have this plug right here, the TT30 or the RV plug. Four 120 volt plug, 20 amps max output. So you have four of these plus your RV plug. You have one, two, three, four USB-A and two power delivery, 100 and your Anderson plug, 12 volt, 30 amps max right here. Let's turn it around to the side. On this side right here, this is where you have your extra battery port. So you can connect the extra battery to this one. You have some vents on the top. Nice grab handle, so you can pick this thing up. So on this side, you have this little tab. Let's open this up. And you have your solar input. So the, the Anderson on the front is your output. This right here is where you'll do your solar input. 12 volt to 150 volt, 15 amps. You have your AC charger and your reset over here. That's where the vent inlet. So like I was saying, this one is your 12 volt, 30 amp output. Let's turn on the AC plugs. You have your output in watts and your hour meter, 60 hertz. Let's turn on the DC. DC comes up right here. You can see your DC is on, it says car charger. Turn on your USB. You can see the USB A, USB C. So everything, real nice display, real nice and bright. Let's turn them off. All right guys, so I have the portable station hooked up to my Variac. So I'm gonna use this to 
put the load I need. So we're gonna get it up to 2,500 and see if we can overload this thing. So it's a 2,500 output. Let's see how much we can pull before we do any other kind of test. I wanna see the peak, what we can work with or what we're working with. Let's see if we can hold 2,500 watts. Okay, so we're gonna turn on our AC. I already have AC on. So here you go, AC. I have the two variac hooked up and we have a lot of lights. This is up to 4,000 watts right here. So we should be able to get 2,500 watts out of this thing. Let's turn on the Variax. One, two. So let's add some load. We'll be checking it out right here. So we're trying to get 2,500. Let's get it up to 1,000. On one. It's right about, it's right about 50% right there. So that's 1,250. 50%. One thing I noticed about this unit is the fan are load sensitive. So the more load you pull, pull the higher the fan works. Let's see if I can come right here. Let you listen to it. Lower the load. The fan goes down. Bring the load back up fan comes up and it goes all the way up let's get 2,000 let's go to 2,500 there you go 2,500 watts So it can handle its full load with no issues. It's not that loud, but the fan are wide open. There you go. So you can do the full load on this unit. It is a 2500 watt output and you can do it. Let's see where it overloads. Look, 26. 50 and you get a E027. Let's turn that off and to come over here and you just hit that and it would reset it. There you go. All right, so this unit, that's a pass. It does support its full output power for quite some time. Now let's take it outside and do some more conventional uh, loading with it. All right guys, now we're outside and we're gonna be doing some more conventional stuff. I have a small deep freezer, a microwave, a small heater. You have over here uh, the power station. You can see I have the deep freezer connected, a small fan with the microwave and the heater, and over here a small light. So this, would, this is exactly how you would use this unit. In a power outage situation, you can have this thing on the inside so you would set it up just like this. Your microwave, your heater, a fan, a little light. So first thing I'm gonna do is come over here, turn on this light. So you got your light, a small fan. Let's put a load on this. You would turn on your, next thing you'd probably be having running all the time is your deep freezer. So let's come over here and turn on this deep freezer. You see right here, we're just pulling a little over, what? 200 so it's absolutely nothing for this we have a light a fan deep freezer you want to run a microwave let's try a microwave let's uh we have some water in here let's do one minute one minute start fourteen hundred watts see guys so you have your deep freezer running a microwave a fan your light you'll be charging some cell phones and you're only pulling right at 1500 while all this is running let's try that heater so it's winter time you want to turn on the heater let's come over here turn on this heater look we're right at this I'm, i only have it on 500 watts i didn't want to turn it all the way up because we already have the microwave running but you can still run a heater a microwave deep freezer, your fan, some lights. 
and this would be for the average person who wants this unit just to uh, you know take care of out outage or power outage and just have some stuff running microwave goes off okay one minute now you can turn your heater you know a little higher pulling right about a thousand watts we still have the deep freezer and the heater so if you're looking for a unit you just want to have inside your house you can actually do all this stuff at the same time here you have it opus 2500 next thing i'm going to do is uh test this on some power tools for someone who might be using this outside in the yard on the land property let's try some power tools and see what we can get away with with this unit right here all right guys so i have some power tools out we're going to start from the left with the circular saw table saw and we have a little grinder circular hand saw and the hardest one is this air compressor these things are not hard to start when they start but when they try to restart usually it needs a good unit to um, get them started so let's start with this one I'll turn it on and then I'll let you guys see the uh, what it pulls all right so let's get started So as you can see, it takes a lot to get started, almost 1500 watts, but then once it gets running, it only pulls about 500 and it makes a huge mess. So let's get to the next one. Let's try the grinder. This little grinder right here. Let's see if it pulls. Not that much, just 500 watts. A little DeWalt grinder. So that's no problem and a little hand saw table saw uh, this thing shouldn't pull that much About the same. 1500 starting then it goes down to around 700 okay now this guy right here I'm gonna flip it on and see if it even starts it That's the true way it's hard when I stop it and try to restart, especially when it has air in the tank. So there you have it guys the only thing we have left to test is this right here and this is one of my favorite things with the portable power station is the RV plug if you have an RV and you're looking for some power on the go when you're boondocking man this thing comes in such a great help especially if you're one of those guys who like waking up early in the morning to make that cup of coffee you don't have to start a generator wake everyone else up you can just do that and be a uh, stealthy as you can because you don't have to turn any generator on to make any noise so this comes in handy all right so let's get it on the rv and we'll run some heavy loads on the rv see the ac and any other thing we can power on the rv and i'll just show you how you can adapt this to power your 50 amp rv all right guys so now i'm going to demonstrate something else i'm going to show you the charging capabilities of this thing so let's plug it into ac and see what we get so i i have this plug right here remember this is the ac charger i'm going to plug it into the wall on the side let's just plug it in currently at 89 percent automatically starts charging you see that's right here it's pulling 
slowly ramping up. Since it's all the way up at 89%, it's not just gonna pull its full 1,600 watts. Um, it's gonna step up to kind of slowly charge it because this thing has been running. So it's pulling right at 400 watts, right? So I'm gonna turn on this load. This fan and this light. Pulling 240. Same has a pure sine wave. It actually gives you the voltage right here. 119 volts, 16 hertz, pure sine wave. Now what I want to do is quickly disconnect it. See? It does have pass-through charging. Because once you disconnected it, it all went to the battery. The light flashed a little bit. I'm going to plug it back in. Plug it back in and there you go. It does have passive charging and UPS mode. So you can plug this into the wall. It will support your load. Once you unplug it, it will switch back to the battery. And it's so fast, the light. I mean, you can see how it barely blinks when it transfers. But we'll have to get this to a lower for, um, percentage to see its full input. It's not going to pull it right now because it's at 89%. But it does charge at 1600 watts and 2500 on solar. So that's pretty good. Let's get this on the RV so we can do some RV load tests, testing out our um, 30 amp plug. All right, guys, so we are at the RV right now, and I have the Opus 2500 plugged into my solar. So this is a solar section. I just have this solar MC4 cable that comes off the roof of my RV. So I got it connected to the unit, the Anderson plug right here. This takes 12 to 150 volt. So you can actually use any type of solar panel as long as it's under 150 volts. All right, so it doesn't matter what solar panel you use. Right now, it's almost the end of the day it's after almost after three so we only getting like 60 watts but as soon as you plug it in to the solar it turns the, the unit on so that's real good to know if you kill it at the end of the day it will come back on and recharge itself this is the plug to my rv this is a 30 amp this is an adapter i'm going to plug it right here and i'll show you what's on the other side how it gets into my rv so I would push this further in so I can close my door and have it while I'm going down the road or just boondocking I actually close this door so this is my inlet for my RV and this goes right here this is coming from the uh, you can see that wire goes on the other side where that power station is now once I come over here and I turn the AC on, my RV will get power. I'm getting 94 now. AC's on. There you go. RV's pulling 200 and right at 200 watts. That's probably the battery charger. So it will get the power from the solar panel into this box and then from my uh, RV. Let's go inside the RV and turn the microwave on for one minute. My microwave is a lot bigger than the one we tested in the shop. Okay, so let's put one minute on this. There you go. As you can see, my microwave here pulls 1,750 watts. All right, so it does run the microwave. This is a convection microwave, so a coffee maker or anything like that, no problem. Come over here. It's real cold today, so let's see if I can get the, oh, I doubt it. Let's see if I can get an AC unit to come on. Oh, 
there you go. I just started the AC. It's pulling around 915 watts. Remember, it's gonna pull a lot more power when it's really hot. It's like 50 degrees right now. I have to set it all the way down to start this AC. So yes, just like that, you can actually use this power station to run your AC. It won't run it all day, but it gets you a good one hour running one AC so you can eat some lunch on the side of the road and you don't have to start the generator. All right, guys, there you had it. We just ran the Opus 2500 on the RV with some power tools and uh, general use like refrigerator, microwave, just how you guys will use it. I just wanna show you some different tests. Guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so right now. Hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment. If I miss anything, let me know in the description. But um, great unit, I really uh, recommend this one. It's a nice unit, especially if you're trying to use uh, in your RV or you want some serious power for home backup. Real nice unit, good size. I will put the link in the description for you. So if you wanna check this out and uh, get one, the link will be in the description. Just go down under, hit that description and you'll see it. Guys, thanks for watching this channel and have a great day. Bye.